Welcome back. You're watching The Agenda. Thank you so much for staying with us. A special memorial service to commemorate 27-year-old Ji Ingu, who died in South Korea as a result of forced religious uh, conversion, was held in the company's garden in uh, the city. She died last January at a resort in Huashun uh, after being kidnapped and throttled by her own parents. The Human Rights Association for Victims of Coercive Conversion Programs hosted the service. It says what happens with coercive programs in South Korea is that there is a Christian council um, that was established and all churches were forced to join the organization. However, Gu came from a small church and her church did not want her to become, uh, want them to become a member. Before Gu's death she, death, she had written a petition to the president of South Korea requesting for the coercive conversion pastors to be subject to penalty of law. Siabuka Tunyusua from the Human Rights Association for Victims of Coercive Conversion joins us in studio. Thank you so much for joining us. And before we talk about the actual uh, conversation we're here to talk about, what is coercive, um, what do they call it? Coercive conversion. Coercive conversion. Yes. Coercive conversion is a program that belongs to the Christian Council of Korea, CCK in short, where it is that the pastors abduct victims, mostly women, and then brutally force them to change their denomination into that of theirs. Now, the interesting part is that it's all happening within the Christian community. The li there are actually lives that are lost due to this, and the challenge is that if it's such a matter that is of religion, um, religious purpose, why is it that there is funding that is involved, the corruption that happens? Because what happens is that the Christian Council of Korea pastors have the family of the victim thinking that their member has fallen into a cult. And then they ask for a ransom so that they can then coerce the, the, the victim where it is if that the victim does not, well, they're confined. And at times they are starved until the person actually signs an agreement where it is that they are saying they will then change their denomination into that which is led by the Christian Council of Korea. And if one doesn't, then brutal uh, matters happen where it is in um, some instances that a, lo a life is lost. And unfortunately, we have no understandings or means of talks or where it is that the government in Korea has made any action. It must be a big issue for there to be a, an actual organization focused on this. Yes, it really is. And you'd think that with the cries that have actually been made by Korea, even reaching out to outside, outside a society like South Africa and all other, um, other countries, where it is that they're hoping that if the global society that which we deem ourselves to be part of, if their voices can be heard, because what they did was, after um, the recent incident of Ms. Gu, the late Ms. Gu, yeah. is that there were rallies that were held in South Korea. A petition was done and over one million people participated. However, no action has been taken. We have no talks or the, the government seems silent. The government has, has come across as silent where the matter is concerned. Give us the South African uh, Korea connection. With the recent incidents that have been happening with pastors um, carrying out such as that we know of the seven stars in Nobo, with the recent incidents of even that okay, which we witnessed there's earlier a link. On. Yes. So our fear is that if a, a human right is what was actually defiled, a human right was what was infringed, whether a person decides to worship a tree, it shouldn't matter. But if a life is taken, then why is it that people are still turning a blind eye to a country such as Korea, which actually enjoys being in the high ranks of, that of, the, of the world? Why is it that no action is actually being taken? After so many people are trying to make their voices heard, why is it that there's no action that is really being taken? Let's talk specifically about the uh, case of Ms. Gu. Yes. What happened there? Ms. Gu was a 27-year-old. The first time she was actually abducted and confined was in, year tw is, was in 2017 where it is that they were successful, if I may say, in confining her. They, what happens is that they have the family carry out the whole act, where it is that the family will abduct the, their, their, the, the family member, induce them with drugs, and then take them to the place of confinement. This is where the, the program is going to take place, where they're, be, they're going to be forced into changing their denomination into that of the pastors. With her, the first time she was confined for 44 days. However, she's, she was successful and she managed to escape. And that's when she wrote the plea to the government and to the president to make sure that there's a law that is enforced and that is a law that is enacted to stop the practice. To stop, yes. However, that did not happen. And that's why, unfortunately, she was then abducted again. But this time around, she was not successful and she lost her life. 
How many incidents are there of... To date this year, there's been 147 and many that haven't been accounted for also. How are the law enforcement... Uh, how, the law enforcement system, how is it recognizing this particular crime? The challenge is that because the pastors are so... They, they, coerce, they, they carry out the program such that the matter is left at the hands of the parents. Their hands are left scot-free while it is that they walk away with ransoms Which virtually money. leaves them powerless. Yes. Yes, it does. So what is to be done? The, there must be a law that is enacted against CCK. The CCK must be dissolved. The Christian Council of Korea must be abolished. In which country, though? In Korea itself, we don't want to have to witness the same likes here in South Africa. We don't have to wait as South African citizens because why does that we are making it known all the way on the other side of the globe is that we don't want to wait for a time where it is that we witness such matters in our very um, society and community. Is there an appetite on the side of uh, the Korean government, North Korean government to, to Not abolish this council? Not as yet. So it's, it's going to be a long struggle. 100%. And that's why we're hoping that as the cries of many people and many people are making known, because there have been articles also that have even been published in the New York Times. However, there's been, the, the government in Korea seems to be silent. And this is where we fail to understand why is it that they're turning a blind ear and eye to their society when it is that Korea still enjoys being in the high ranks of that of the world. Why is, what is, what, what is happening? Has your organization tried reaching out? Yes, we did. We had campaigns where it is that we had a petition asking that a law may be enacted. However, the government is silent to this day. So what do you hope to do like going forward? That there must be thorough investigation that is done within the Christian Council of Korea and that pastors who are responsible for this and the Christian Council itself must be banished. There must be a law that is enacted against this infringement of human right, which we call religious of, um, a freedom of religion, and that there must be a law that is enacted and people must be held liable and accountable. Are you working with any other civic organizations in this effort? Not as yet. Okay. So I suppose... Um, it's, it's a continuing conversation, isn't it? Indeed. What would you like to, because this is such a, a new conversation, mm. I imagine. To mm. me, it is. Uh, to our viewers watching at home, yes. uh, how would you like to conscientize them about this conversation, especially in relation to practices here in South Africa? Well, we, a person, even as the... the, the, the um, our constitution and our bill of rights allows us that a person is has the freedom to practice their religion and if uh if a human right is then infringed and then there must be a law that is taken against the perpetrator that's what we want yeah okay thank you so much uh, for talking to us and uh, like i said us. it's a it's a really new conversation mm -hmm. and i hope we can continue to have it especially in relation thank to so how um it, the, the impact is here in south africa thank, thank you so, you so much, much for your time thank you for having me all right let's take a break you're watching